Hello and welcome back to Bursting to the Scene, episode number three. Today we're going to be discussing the price of a dream. I just want to say a massive thank you once again to everyone that continues to follow and like share the podcast around um, it's amazing very quick side note we're now on instagram and on tiktok bursting into the scene on youtube i'll leave a link in the bio and on spotify it's just typing bursting into the scene or at bursting into the scene on tiktok and on instagram we're going to be posting clips going to do some interactive stuff as well so i'm really looking forward to bringing that to you so thank you very much to everyone today i haven't really gone much into detail about myself in terms of my actual journey in football and in sports and it's kind of obviously the reason why my passion now is in football and also in business as well but it's kind of intertwined obviously which is why the podcast comes that way and also where my knowledge comes from as well me personally i think my story resonates with a lot of people but i know people have gone through a lot worse than i have you know and i'm going to explain that a little bit more um through my whole journey really not just in terms of the business side of things but actually through my passion and desire and falling out of that became a bit of a challenge when i was a kid when i was i think i started playing football when i was nine so quite late compared to a lot of people no maybe eight i didn't play for a team until i was nine and i remember i wanted to be a striker um i think we used to do these like summer camps in swindon town and so i'd always go i'd always go play up front score a few goals and i loved it i was just like this is insane i love playing football but then when i went to my first team and i trying to try it out to be a striker they were like no 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 no. you go and go <laughs> and so I did my first year I think I was maybe nine or ten and I was okay then the year after I got pretty decent like, I did quite well and I quite enjoyed the position I, and I was just one of those people that was like yeah I just want to play for a team so I'll happily go and go I'll play anywhere but then I got quite good those first two or three years maybe were really fun because I was just playing football for the love of it and I turned out to be like quite good but I didn't even think of it as anything serious it was just more like yeah this is calm like we won the league one season I think the second year I got like a good amount of clean sheets the second the second year we got promoted and then we were in the top division and we did really well we got to like third before we had to fold unfortunately but we were doing really well in the league that season we could have won it so we were like quite a good team in our area um we were one of the better sides around i stopped playing for a little bit then i signed for another team and this is where i think it changed because around that time i also started to go to secondary school so i by this point had been told that people were looking at me in the academy let's say and i think unfortunately that changed my mental that my whole way of thinking because i suddenly started to realize okay this is more than just playing this is actually now something a bit more serious i've got to work hard unfortunately i took a nosedive i went to secondary school and i got a bit big let's say that so my football career kind of died out quite quickly in terms of physically but not mentally mentally i was still there i was like i really want to push to play football unfortunately that meant that i stopped enjoying it a little bit and from the years of maybe under 12s to under 14s they were some of the most difficult years for me playing football i really didn't enjoy it and I think it's something that a lot of people experience obviously a lot later. I was very fortunate because I didn't get to academy. I think the highest level I probably played at was just below, like just below the academy. So I wasn't quite good enough to get into it, but I was, you know, I was not bad, I was okay. But in those times I was like putting a lot of pressure on myself to really push and get to that academy level. And it just meant that the enjoyment side of things got taken away from me because I put myself under a lot of pressure to try and do well. And it's one of those things that I know people go through in sport all the time. It's, you know, it's a pressure thing because you're getting told, you know, I'm listening to a podcast that um, Trent Alexander-Arnold did at the moment with Steven Gerrard about the impact of, you know, trying to, that post-16 contract or that time when it goes away from being just a, a fun thing and now becomes more of a challenge, like I've got to try and make it. So it's a bit it's a difficult thing to try and master and you know when you're a kid and you're quite young of course you want to try and play football of course it's something that you're going to work hard to do to make it you know it's your dream and i put that pressure on myself to be a keeper and had these dreams of being a premier league goalkeeper and really making it at the top level you know as a kid and really i should have just enjoyed the process unfortunately because we were still a good team in our area i just hated it and we won the league one year and we went unbeaten and I did okay. I think I did all right in that season. And at the end of it, I was just so relieved that I didn't mess up. I think part of that is also because I'm a goalkeeper as well. So it was it's a challenging position in terms of 
mentally I was like, I'm on my own. There's a lot of responsibility on myself. The year after, I remember we lost the league. And I think the fact that I can remember these things so clearly actually shows that it still is quite a painful thing today that I, I still feel. I played one game, we were doing really well in the league. We got to like the last maybe like three games or something. It was really close to another team. And we played one game and we lost 2-0 and I had an absolute like howl, I was terrible. And that was probably the moment that I realised I just mentally decided I wasn't cut out for it. I was like, I can't do this anymore, I'm not good enough. We still had like two games left to go in the season. And in that moment I thought, this is ridiculous. The pressure just got to me so much personally and I wasn't enjoying my football at all. We lost the league by like two points or one point or something. We won the cup final after that. And after that cup final, I pretty much just like told myself I didn't want to play football anymore. Like I, I just didn't want to do it. And you know, the story for so many other people is they go through that, but at a much higher level because now, you know, obviously academy is different. Like you have your whole career and you kind of your life really gambled on making it as a professional footballer. Obviously, I wasn't going to do that. So I was quite fortunate and blessed that I could still try in school. I didn't bank my future, no. But because I just put myself under so much pressure, it really caused me to fall out of love with the game. And I just quit the team. Like, I pretty much went to my manager two games before the next season started and said, I can't do this anymore because I was I was so worried. Uh, we did like two preseason games and I remember just thinking, nah, I can't do this. So I pretty much tried to stick it out and tell myself I'd be fine. Nah, I was out. And it shocked everyone because they were like, you're doing fine. And I wish I'd told myself at the time that it was okay. And it wasn't about, yes, we wanted to win, of course, there's that competitive spirit, but it was more about trying to enjoy the game. And I just wasn't doing that. So that was a shame. And I really wish I could go back and tell myself at that time, you just have to be fine. And, you know, I don't know if you can see, but I've got medals in the background. Like we won a lot of things. We played games, we went to competitions. My teammates that I played with were amazing. And, you know, as people as well, they were really good. And so I had no problems with that. I just put myself under so much pressure and it, it stopped that love that I had for football in general. I'd still play FIFA and things like that because it was you know quite a social thing to do. But I didn't enjoy personally engaging with football or watching football as much. I think just because it was quite a painful thing for me to think that I was just a failure. I branded myself at 14 as a bit of a failure and almost like life was, I'm going to fail in everything that I do. And I think it actually kind of drives me on today. And that's kind of the point of the video is like, these things can have long lasting effects if you really don't control them. Now, I know a lot of people go through the same journey where they've really put hard, for some people it's injury, some people they go through it, they get injured and that's the end of their career and it's really unlucky. Some people, other people grow. I've seen that happen to people where they were really good when we were younger, other people grow and unfortunately they just can't grow as well. So it's not even down to their skill, it's just down to bad luck. But I think because I thought to myself, I didn't give myself the best opportunity to try and at least make it, it was a failure and I failed myself. So. That was a challenge and you know obviously then I took three four years to try and overcome that because now I, I once I stopped at 14 I say stopped I, I went to like another team another few teams really but I, I didn't have the same love for the game the teams were great and it was like really again great people but I just didn't love playing football I don't think I've played like football at that level not even like at a like let's say competitive level but even like in just recreational low level apart from six aside for about four or five years just because I, I can't get over I think that mental block of oh my god like am I gonna am I any good like I was rubbish last time so what's the point point? and it's a shame I think it's a challenge because that actually carries on into my day-to-day -day business life like if I'm not achieving 100% doing the best I can then it's a, it's a bit of a failure and I think it's a perspective that I can't look at so that was a challenge trying to get over that loss in football but I still had to try and redirect myself. And I, I always think I was quite lucky to stumble back into football because I wasn't gonna go and study at a university. I had no plans to do that until pretty much the last minute where I saw it come up and I thought, yeah, football business, that sounds cool. I used to like football, I'm gonna do it and then got back into it. But even then I was only going to study, I didn't play. So that again, didn't really bring that connection back of I'm gonna play football. It was more just, I'm in football now to listen to it. So I think for people, you know, of course, it's a challenge. You know, you dedicate so much of your life. And I think there are things like Trent Alexander-Arnold aftercare. I think football clubs are doing it a little bit more now where they're offering more support for players because it's not just obviously the physical support for some people who might be injured, but the mental support. You give up so much of your life to go through an academy thinking you're going to make it. You also serve to, those, to that football club, you know, 
people like give up a lot to serve to that club and then they don't make it the club can let them go at any time or they get injured so there's a lot of support that's better but it's still not where i think it should be i think at a lower level as well for some people who maybe don't get into academies but they might have come close there's a challenge because you're like well what do i do now and they've you know maybe they've some of them have gone to school done other things but there's still that thing of football isn't really the way like if you don't make it in the industry it's over and it's so far from the truth i you know i've tr now done some business and some business work with people who are you know we're looking to encourage young people to get opportunities back into the game i know there are things initiatives like the fa youth council for example that i've worked alongside these guys are really pushing that opportunity of industry outside of playing so i think it's just about awareness and it took me a long time to rediscover that you know once i even went back into it maybe for the first year of uni i was you know kind of just taking it a bit easy and like oh you know i'm here but football's not really for me and you even go through stages where you're studying it and I'm like I don't even want to watch it because it's just too much football like, I don't love it like that I wouldn't say I love it like that even as much now things like the Euros or you know I like obviously it's a business and don't get me wrong it's a great sport I still would love to go and watch games and all these different things but and when it's great it's good but for me it's more about business venture and all these different things rather than the game itself which is a shame I think it's a shame that I've lost that but you know it is what it is but having to knowing that i had a passion in football and i studied football it was like it kind of makes the most sense to go down obviously without loving the game so it's definitely something that i think is an interesting topic and when i look at things like the crystal palace academy documentary for example it's really really interesting because you know some people that there's a bit more of an aftercare now and so it's also great that I think it was televised the harsh realities of what some people go through it in you know, young kids. I mean, not only are they just fighting for their careers, but they're actually fighting for their current jobs right now because a lot of them bank a lot on being professional footballers. And if they don't make it, well, then they're out. So I think it's something that business and entrepreneurship, it can be quite similar in terms of it's a tough reality. You know, if you make it, then, you know, it's great. And you probably look back on that journey and go, wow that was really really rewarding but if you don't make it you probably sit there and go actually i'm not really sure was that all worth it same as football i know football academy players who hate football because they've gone through that journey so it's quite interesting i think people who are interested in football i think you have to look at it and approach it from your own skill set perspective sport because being in love with sport it's a competitive element if i think if you love sport personally especially if you love football or anything you have like the credentials and the mold to work in business because you have that competitive spirit it's in it's in deep and rooted in you i think if people who have played academy level you know so they know high high quality and i didn't but i know people who did they have probably stuck to routine, they've been dedicated, disciplined, work really, really hard. That's you know traits that you need in business and they've got a skill set. Now, obviously it takes a lot to unlearn and to relearn some things, of course, but the skill set is there, the fundamentals are there. It's just the mental side because unfortunately you've gone through so much, you're like, actually, it's just not worth it. I'm not gonna be interested. So, you know, I'm working in kind of that space to try and educate more number one but number two provide more platforms for organizations to be able to you know deliver better services and you know provide better support as well i think that's really really important and also educate more educate more ways that you know coaches and you know people that are training players can actually reach out to their players and this is not like me trying to do anything like that it's more just because it's so important and it's actually quite a passionate thing to me you know, I did, I started my business because of my experience, because it was hard to, you know, have that acceptance and then brand myself as a failure. I almost did it to prove to myself that I can still make it in football and not fail. So it wasn't really anything more than that. It was just like, in terms of making money, it was just like, I want to just prove to myself that I don't fail in football. And of course that's great but i'm not sure if that's 100 percent the reason why you should do it of course you know, it's going to help people but i think deep down it's something that i wish i did it for a better reason and motivational wise had a better incentive to do that but it's good because obviously now it's helping people people are learning and i think that's really important you know everyone has got a skill set that they can channel if they use it in the right direction it takes a lot of learning and i would love to hope now that football clubs organizations there's more out there that you can turn to but ultimately i think from my experience and my experience is not as much compared to other people's experience it just takes a lot of self-reflection to go okay 
I'm not a failure. I don't think anyone that ever gets released from football should think of themselves as a failure. In fact, I really respect people who've come out of academies um, at any level because it's so hard. Also because I didn't make it. So you had to have a certain level of discipline to get there, a certain level of discipline to stay there and to achieve things. And it also means that you've got a skill set and a great mentality to go, actually, okay, you can do these things. And if you can channel them in another way, you can go on to have great opportunities and great successes and great careers. So I, I always believe that you just have to think and go through a process of, OK, understanding your next journey and your next passion, because it, it's not going to work out for everyone. You have to remember that I think it's like 0.001 percent of people will end up being a professional footballer. It's the same as, I guess, business. Like the top is so slim when you consider how many people there are. So you've got to you know, try it. And I always believe that you should try. I, I think as well, and this is not really topic related to business, but I think it's important that kids are told that they should enjoy football. This is kind of a bit of a ramble now, but it's not good when kids are just, you know, from like five, six, seven, eight, being told to fight for their own livelihood really at that age. Of course, yes, it's great to breed winners and breed competition because that is what sport is. That's what life is. Life is kind of, it's pretty much a competition. But you have to enjoy certain moments, especially at that age. Those years where I was like 9, 10 and 11, where I didn't care about making it, I just loved playing football, were probably the best years. That's why I enjoy Six Aside, because I was, you know, there's nothing that's going to come from it. We win or we lose, but I enjoy the fact that it's not really that competitive. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But it's just, it's not great that I think it's just so pushed that you have to fight at five or six years old it's almost a bit of a detriment on one hand because you're getting pushed at such a young age and being told as well, if you do this, do this, do this, you're going to be sold the dream life. So that's a little bit of a ramble, but I think it's it's really important to go about ways of making sure that we teach our kids the right message and make sure that they are, you know, they're educated, but they're also looked after and also tell them that maybe their skills that they have, yeah, okay, if it doesn't work out in football, you've proved over a course of three, four years, however long you're in the academy, even if you're in there for one year, that you can keep up, you can dedicate yourself and you can show up to you know, apply your skill set and craft. Instead of being like, just kicking them out and then brandishing them as, oh, you didn't make it, or I was a release it as an academy pro. No, you can actually go, okay, you didn't make it in this aspect, but you've got these skill set and now I can go and do it in a football career or I can go and do it in business or I can go and do it in finance, like, you know, and be at the top of my game and have that competitive element to go, I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to be a successful person and I'm going to do it anyways, because I've shown myself and I've shown to other people that I've got the skill set and dedication to do so. I think if you can start to re-message that and re and do it in another way and package it that's encouraging, then you're going to have a far greater rate of people who have more confidence when they come out of it. You know, you're going to reduce things like anxiety, depression, all these difficult things and and things that people I don't think really want to talk about that unfortunately happen to young footballers, male and female. It's not, you know, it's hard on both levels. And so I think there needs to be a better support for people and also more encouragement. I think it's very important that we encourage people. Look, at 16 years old, of course, you get your first pro contract. That's different. That's now your life that you're fighting for. But I especially think it's really important if you're a bit younger than that, even if you're in the academy, just you know, remember that you have skills it's not just on the pitch that you have skills you have mental skills you have mental resilience you've actually got an advantage over a lot of people and i know for a fact that they don't enjoy playing football a lot of them like yeah it's football so it's considered like it's a fun thing to do but it's not that those guys have to work hard they have to really really work hard to get anywhere near an opportunity to the point where kicking a football that's why a lot of them come out of it not just the mental but they just hate it because they've seen it as something that was an enjoyment when they were young and now they've had to kick football, kick football, kick football every single day and run and run and run and run and be told and be told and compete and compete against other 14 year olds in their own academy and let alone in the whole country and then let alone in the whole world. So when you start to think it in that perspective, especially as a kid, you're just like, wow, this is too much. So if they don't make it, oh my God, do they hate it? So I, you know, I think there's so many different ways that we can brandish it and start to support kids that way. And for me, obviously, like I said, I, I consider myself fortunate that I at least didn't get to that level where I came close because I think that would have been a lot harder to deal with. But then I, it had to, I had to really think about, okay, I played football and I didn't like losing. So what type of thing can I do in life that results in kind of a similar thing where, of course, it's not the adrenaline of playing, but I don't like losing. I want to make sure that whatever I apply myself to 
it's to win it's to compete and business was that business you know you're going to you're going to lose in business of course but you can really get back from business like you're going to lose a result in football in a football game you're not going to win every game but when you lose it's about how you get back up and so thankfully i was able to repackage my thinking to go okay when well, i just applied to business and those skill set have helped me to be where i am at this point so far growing and and really learning and finding that purpose again in football and so if i can do it someone who didn't even have half the skill set as some of these other guys who made it then for sure they can do it and the support will only get better and better now things like ai are coming into it as well and so there's going to be more systems and you know practices and data that's going to help you to find that goal and achieve that and i think that's really important i think it's really you know it just needs to be said it needs to be considered it needs to be encouraged as well it's really really important it surprises me that it's not um and it's a real shame i think you know i, I saw you know some players have, have gone through really challenging times and some people they just they don't really recover and it's a shame because obviously they've given a lot of their life to that so i would like to hope that people can recognize their own skill whether they make it whether they don't and feel like they've got a real bulk of evidence to go oh yeah i did that i can do that in something else and do that in something hopefully that doesn't tell me that if i don't get to this point at the age of 16 i'm done and then i'm just thrown out kit to the can and then i have to move on really important and i think these are valuable lessons that can really provide just support systems for people i think it's crucial i think it really really is important and i was looking at you know some of the numbers as well in terms of people that fall out of the leeway and up by the wayside and then they don't really struggle they struggle to get back into it of it i went to a university where a lot of people who played at a high level they go and study it you know coaching i know seems to be really popular and i think it's great that a lot of people really go in, that go into coaching because it's i think it's kind of a similar medium in terms of okay i didn't make it in this, this aspect but at least i can go into coaching and still be on the pitch still be part of a team aspect still be in the dressing room i think it's great I'm not I don't coach personally but I think it's great that coaches still have that passion and still love the game in that sense I personally can't do it I, I you give me a tactics board I can't even play football manager I got relegated with Manchester United in like one season of football manager that I did because I just couldn't be bothered to look at the tactics I was like I just want to get into the game and play played one year of it and I was like no this isn't for me um I just don't love the game like that so i'd rather play fifa where it's a bit easier i can just change my team around and then go and play myself but you know for some people they just love it and they really really get into it and i think it's a skill set because you know you'll think you're being very meticulous number one but number two you're showing your experience you're showing your craft you're showing your way of communication these are skills that you need in life and these are skills that people are showing and they explain it to me, an idiot who has no idea. I couldn't tell you anything about tactics. And when it comes to even watching Man United play for all these years, I couldn't tell you. I probably get the tactics wrong half the time. I talk like I know. And if my friends listen to this and they're like, yeah, this guy sounds so good with ball knowledge, I promise you it's just complete waffle. Half the time, I have not got a clue. But it probably sounds correct because maybe the commentator said it like 10 minutes ago. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to stick to that. And then I'm going to bring it out when I need to. Oh, yeah, we're doing a 4-3-3 like diamond formation. I have not got a clue. But then someone that I know, I have friends who are coaches, that explain something to me. And I'll go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I can actually see that on the pitch. Like, that was really, really good. And these are skills that they have. And to them, they're probably just like, they probably thought it was nothing because they love it. But for me, I was like, wow, that was really impressive. You communicated that well. That was clear and concise. And I'm a dummy. I have no clue. And so... There's so many different ways that you can rebrandish it and re, you know, repackage your thinking. I think it's always important to just be able to keep calm and and think, okay, like there's always a, a way out of it, even if it's the you know at a time when it's it's so devastating. If you get released or something happens at a bad time, you should always know that you've got a skill set that you can transfer. I think I wish just I'd known that at the time to go. I played competitive football. I learned to be as part of a team. And I learned to win and I learned to lose. These are skills that are good in life. But unfortunately, it was just in a game that I thought at one point I used to love. And then I just put the pressure on myself, took the love and enjoyment away and it became a challenge. So it's really important. And I think it's it's just 
perspective as well. Perspective is huge, you know. So many people don't make it in football. And I've had to tell myself that sometimes as well. I've had to tell, not tell other people, but I've had to accept that that's actually the reality. Chances are, even if I did it perfect, I was probably never going to make it anyways, you know. I'm, I'm just not good enough. But it's harder than when you have to accept that I could have done more. And I think that's probably the part that hurts me the most is that I didn't give myself the best shot because I put so much pressure on myself to not enjoy it. And that's that's a shame. You can unlearn and learn things really quickly. And I think it's just important that as a young person, you know, if, if you're in the football academy, if you're not in the football academy, you can, you know, take energy in harnessing that power that you have and that energy that you have and that competitive spirit that you have to go, okay, this wasn't the right fit, but I can go down this avenue, I can go down this avenue and just make the most of it. And it gives me comfort. And obviously because I've been through it and now I've come out the other side, I get that comfort. And that's kind of a message that I'm trying to get towards other people as well. Like, look, there's so many different ways that you can do it. So just be brave and also just have hope and have belief in yourself. I think it's really easy to lose that confidence, but I wish I hadn't lost that confidence. Um, and it's important that you guys don't either. So I think that's a really valuable lesson that I've learned. And, you know, it's just something that, you know, as we go more into the podcast, I look to explore and do a bit more of a deeper dive into. I think it's a great thing to really be interested and learn about. I, I think it's, you know, it's something I'm passionate about as well. So, you know, for sure, we will continue to look into it. I'm going to leave the podcast here today. Thank you like so much for listening to this one. Um, a bit more about myself, a bit more personal. The next few ones are going to have a bit more of a personal touch as well. But really, we're going to start to debunk a few more things and really go into a bit more detail about the football industry. So I'm excited for those ones. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.